Now, events commemorating this year's International Women's Day highlighted the unsung contributions of the women folk, especially when considered against the backdrop of mounting societal odds. For a discussion around this, we're now being joined by Torea Abiola, founder of Wawi and Tore Aduke Agency, who is also the executive producer of Fireside Sessions, an initiative geared towards celebrating Women's Month. She will shed some more light on this and, how, and about how the various advocacies in support of women causes can be better harmonized to force a change or reconfiguration of existing narratives for greater impact. Welcome to the show, Torera. Hi, lovely to be here. Lovely to have you. Good morning. So let's get right into it. You know, uh, so many celebrations this month in, in different capacities around International Women's Month. Let's talk about how you're addressing it using your platform and what is your, your greater message? Right. So um, we all know that if we carry on on the current pace, that it will take us over 130 years to reach gender parity. So there is a real need to make action to ensure that women are getting their rights and equal to everyone else. What we've noticed in the past year because of COVID is we've noticed that progress has actually stepped back. So advancements for women have actually gone back a little bit, which is also quite sad. And we also notice that many interventions are not working. What is working is role models. That is for women to see people that look like them, that speak like them, that they can relate to in positions of influence, in positions of power. And really that is what we've been doing. We've been showcasing women. We've been showcasing them telling their stories. So we've not just been showing the glamorous, wonderful side about being an executive or a senior leader. We've shown the struggles that a lot of women go through in managing family life, their health, relationships, and societal expectations. Um, with their career and business goals. So we focused a lot on showcasing women so that they're available as role models to young women and other women that have ambitions. And we also showcase these women in their full glory. So we show everything from the successes, but we also talk about the hard times. We talk about the challenges they face at work. We talk about the challenges they face with relationships. We talk about the challenges with their children as well. All right, uh, Torira, um, I, I was going to ask you uh, why uh, fireworks, fireside sessions. I was going to ask if it has anything to do with the music, you know, and the concerts, you know, that are known by that name. Uh, so I'd like you to talk to us about why fire, uh, sorry, fire uh, the side fire session. Fireside session. Yeah, the fire session. Yes. Okay, so... I'm actually a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed in 2019 with breast cancer. Um, luckily, now I'm, you know, recovered in good health. But I, I've been working for the last 20 years. I had a very exciting career, traveling all over the world, you know, very glamorous, very wonderful. And then I get this news about breast cancer. And I felt cut off from the rest of the world for the first time in my life. I was bed bound, I couldn't do a lot, I couldn't contribute to work or anything. And I got to quite a dark place. And I realized that a lot of women go through very challenging times, but they don't have the content available to them to encourage them. A lot of content that's available to women is either very glossy, glamorous magazines, which are great, or people on social media saying how wonderful their life is. Nobody really talks about the times that you literally feel like you're walking through fire. And that's how I felt um, during my cancer diagnosis and treatment. I felt like I was walking through fire. And many times I, I wondered if I could make it. And at that point, I thought there must be lots of other women that are going through really tough things. And wouldn't it be nice for them to see content from women that have gone through similar challenges, but come out the other side. So when we talk about the fire sessions, we're talking about your moment of walking through fire, but coming out on the other side, brandished, golden, and thriving. And that was really the inspiration behind creating 
the fire sessions chat. So we have amazing Nigerian women, very accomplished, um, from the founder of Tara to the founder of the uh, Marcel Ruth Cancer Center, Dr. Lebute Odunsi, many high profile women talk about some of the most devastating periods of their lives, but most importantly, how they coped and how they came out of it. And I think that that's important for women to know that it's not all glitz and glamour and wonderful. And when you see an amazingly accomplished woman, there's a story behind her success. There's a sort of a rites of passage, I guess, through this fire moments of life that she's come through and still managed to be on top. So that was really the inspiration behind creating the series. Right. I'm glad that you have highlighted some of the discussions that you have in your fire sessions. I, I wanted to dig deep, uh, uh, deeper with your conversations. I don't know if you guys also talk about gender inequality during your sessions. You know, this year's um, Zero Discrimination Day was themed around removing laws that harm and create laws that empower uh, people like women. You know, I'd love to know if you have conversations and, like that, and I'd like to know your thoughts on uh, the bills that were passed this year, that were rejected, uh, excuse me, uh, this year, that were against uh, women. Right, so the interesting thing, um, so I'm gonna take the, that question in two parts. The interesting things about the women that we showcase and that are interviewed in the series and I've been working women empowerment since 2007. Very rarely do they talk about, because I'm a woman, I was held back, right? They don't say it explicitly. And that's something that's really important for people to understand. It's the societal pressures and the family pressures that come with being a woman that make it very difficult. So many of the women talk about losing children, for example, miscarriages. Many of them talk about jealousy at work from other women and how that had a detrimental effect or damaging effect on them and how they came out of it. So I think also when we talk about gender equity, everybody expects it to be something like you go into the office and the man says, you're a woman, you can't get promoted. It's really, it's not that explicit. It's really in everything around life. The fact that during COVID, although both man and woman has to be at home, most women were also taking care of childcare. So we talk about the gender inequality issue in the terms of the challenges the women face. And what you find is no matter how successful you are or where you are in your career, you still have to manage the traditional roles that are assigned to the woman. And that's where I guess you get the inequality and that's where you have the problem. Now, speaking to the recent issue that we've had in Nigeria around the bill, um, Nigeria is actually quite, it's an unfortunate case in the sense that we're really quite low in global rankings when it comes to political participation. We have 5% representation of women in parliament, and I think just 10% in ministerial roles. And this is really shocking considering the fact that over 45% of women vote. So there's something really wrong in our political participation element, just looking at the figures and not being emotive. There's something wrong with the fact that 45% of a group of people contribute to a process, but they're only allowed a 5% leading or influential position in that process, and at most a 10% when it comes to being ministers. And out of 200 countries in the world, Nigeria is in the 180s when it comes to political participation. Now that's comparing to countries like Namibia and Rwanda who are you know, in the top 10 in the world and doing really well. So I think we seriously need to think about just being fair to women when it comes to political participation in Nigeria. The figures are not good um, in terms of how it looks for us. All right, Tori Rabela, I want to thank you for joining us on the program today. Uh, and I believe that uh, one of these days, uh, Abi and Oji will look forward to joining you on the fire sessions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank oh, you. we'd love to have you. Thank <laughs> you for right. your time. Thank you so thank much. You.